um, in the first part, we'll be speaking about uh, data preparation and uh, as dynamics NAV and AX is way different. So what do we have here? In the source, we have Microsoft Dynamics NAV with, let's say, about 1,000 tables or 6,000 with uh, 6,000 to 7,000 AX. We, we, we structure this uh, already in the data warehouse or in the cubes. So in the next step we do in a uh, Power BI, we do some desktop modeling and importing data to publish this data in the cloud. There is a gateway uh, if you want to uh, automatically update our data in the mobile and we need a, a gateway, otherwise we can do with the free version manually. I will have a look and the uh, first part of our presentation is what ab all about data source. When we import data to uh, Power BI Desktop, we have more ways to do. We can go directly to SQL ERP database and go after one of the 1,000 or 6,000 tables. And that's, that's possible, that's an option, but not the best way. Uh, because we have to you know, transform data somehow. And these raw data are not really something that you, you are happy to build BI uh, solution on top of that. Now, a better way to go is uh, if you have some ready structured data that come out of ERP. So NAV, latest version of NAV, have web services that uh, are giving uh, through all data feed uh, queries or pages. And this is better because uh, it's already at least somehow structured, uh, but still has to go away, uh, go some way. Uh, let's finish here. The best definitely would be if we have a data warehouse based solution or you know just cube based solution and without a data warehouse then we can go directly to the cubes. But here isn't a problem. This won't work if you don't have a enterprise version, uh, either business intelligence or enterprise version on SQL 2012 and later. So as we have seen most of the customers is not there yet so we have to go one step back and this is data warehouse. If you have data warehouse based solution, otherwise we suggest you to do something in between because uh, yeah, this can solve you something, some level, but you need something more. Actually, if we have a look in the next table, uh, uh, backend part by different data sources and let's focus on readiness, okay? Uh, directly going to the source, we are not much uh, ready little better with, for example, Dynamics NIV BI Content Pack, depending on what you need. Uh, so we are 2050. Data Warehouse, most transformation in, in, uh, are done in Data Warehouse. And if you have the cubes, cubes create MDX and uh, hierarchies, translations, and so on. So we can do this in most of the things also in DAX. The cubes are the best choice, but due to licensing, uh, we cannot really use it so often. So because we are uh, ISV that offers standardized solution, we have to focus on where most of our customer is. This is in this area. And later, this is also coming. Uh, Excel will be also a nice source, not pinning the report to Excel, but just, you know, Power BI reading Excel structures. So let's focus now, continue on that warehouse. And the first thing uh, that we notice when we are looking into the um, Power BI price list, at Microsoft is saying something about the size and we are not used to you see free user 1 GB and paid user 10 GB which is you know why in in good old Excel times or other front-end times it was not much about the size of course Microsoft is publishing this to the cloud and if we are parking a car into someone's garage you know it's not unlimited now the question uh, we have to know what is the other size the question is can we have our own garage can we publish Power BI reports on premise, which means in sort of a server, server part or something. And the answer is not yet. Microsoft is offering SQL Server reporting services in 2016 that is based on data Zen, but this is not Power BI. And uh, another thing, uh, SQL Server 2016 reporting services can host Power BI file, but later you can view it in a uh, par you can only view it in the Power BI, you cannot view it in the browser. So actually, you know, the SQL roadmap says that, okay, we have delivered SQL 2016, phase one. In phase two, 
Microsoft will deliver also a Power BI on premise, which is a good. Uh, it's a structure that will not require SharePoint, uh, and it will work uh, as I hope works now across browsers, which is uh, very often a case because many organizations or governments are somehow still reluctant to go to the cloud. Now back to the data size in Excel time. You know, whatever you put to Excel, you will be, you know, around 50, 100K or more. Now, if you import 1 million rows into Power BI report, because Power BI report keeps structures and data, suddenly we have 150 M, M megabyte, which is, you know, already something. 1 million rows is not a small table, but it's not really a big table. So if we use, uh, you know, 100K, then it's about 15 mega. So it's a linear, depends also. And the same data, if you check your data structures in your NAV, uh, then these data size are similar, maybe plus minus 15, 20% depends on the keys that we are using. So you have a good idea how much space you will, you know, need you have 10 GB for a pro version or 1 GB for a free version. You just count the tables, more or less, and yeah, it should work. Now, uh, but there is something that Microsoft is developing heavily, and the, the other mode is that allows uh, that uh, is not importing data, but is you know just you know sending a query to the source. In this case, you may have one million rows in your uh, data source, but because this is another remote, you'll be using less than one mega or around one mega. So for example, for 50 million rows, you know, this should be already, you know, 50 times, you know, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and it will be much, much, much less. Uh, so what we, we definitely have to learn about the other way. Uh, one way is import and the other is direct query.